Hello and welcome back. Now recently I've reviewed Debian 12. The latest version of Debian is just awesome. In my review, I had a lot of great things to say about it and I highly recommend it. Now, if you followed along with me and you now have Debian installed on your laptop or desktop, then what should you do with it? Well, obviously you should use it and enjoy it, but that's not why you're here. The reason why you're here is because you wanna know which 12 things you should do first after installing Debian 12. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you in today's video. Now, before we get into that, I need to take a moment to mention the sponsor for today's video, Akamai Connected Cloud. If you're looking for a cloud provider that's affordable, flexible, and reliable, then look no further than Akamai Connected Cloud. With Akamai's cloud platform, you can spin up Linux servers quickly, and the platform contains all the features you'll need to deploy full-featured solutions. And using the marketplace, you could easily deploy applications such as NextCloud, Rocket Chat, Mastodon, WordPress, Pi-hole, Plex, Jenkins, and many more. In fact, there's over 100 applications available in the marketplace. If you want to set up a custom Linux instance, you could do that too. All the popular Linux distributions are available on the platform, including, but not limited to, Debian, CentOS, Fedora, Ubuntu, and many others. In fact, even Arch Linux is available. So check out Akamai Connected Cloud with the URL that you see on the screen right now, which will do two things. First, it'll help support this channel, which I'll really appreciate. And it'll also get you $100 in starter credit to check out the platform. And thank you yet again to Akamai for sponsoring today's video. Now with all of that out of the way, let's get right into it. Let's look at 12 things that you should do right after installing Debian 12. So the first thing we're going to do is install updates. If we're using the desktop version, what we could do is click on activities. And then down here, we have an icon for GNOME software. So we'll open that. And then what you wanna do is click on this tab right here where it says updates. And then all we have to do is click this download button right here to start the process. If you want more information about what in particular is going to be updated, I mean, it just shows system updates right here. It doesn't give us a list, but if we click on it, we'll see a list. And at this time, we only have this one update. And depending on when you're watching this video, you might have more than this. Anyway, what we'll do is click download to start the process. And then the icon changed to restart and update. So I'll click on that. And what that'll do is restart the system to make sure that Debian is fully updated. If you are not running the desktop version of Debian, then in the command line, here's what you can do. We can switch to root, and we can do that by typing su hyphen and then root, just like that. We'll type in root's password. And now, as you can see from the prompt, we are using the root account. Then what we could do is type apt update. That'll refresh the package repository index. Essentially, it checks in to see if any new packages are available for download and installation. So I'll enter that. And it's telling me that all packages are currently up to date. That makes sense because Debian 12 is brand new. However, if we did have updates, then what we would run is apt and then dist hyphen upgrade. And that'll download any packages that are currently installed but have newer updates available. Now, if you haven't enabled the root account, and you only have a user account like the one I have here, then what you could do is run sudo apt update as your normal user. And again, apt update will refresh the package repository index. So nothing different here other than the fact we're using sudo, but the end result is exactly the same. And similarly to our previous example, in normal user mode, we could run sudo and then apt dist hyphen upgrade to install the available updates. And that should be all there is to it. Now the next thing we're going to do is install Flatpak. Flatpak is an optional package that we can install that gives us access to even more software. In addition, Flatpak will give us access to newer versions of applications that are currently installed. Now installing Flatpak will not automatically update applications you have installed right now. But what it will do is give us access to newer applications that we could choose on an as needed basis. And not only that, a few of the examples in this video are going to require Flatpak support. 
So we'll just go ahead and get that taken care of right now. So to set it up, what we'll do is run a few commands in a terminal. If you're using Debian over SSH, for example, then you already have a terminal connection going, so you have what you need to install Flatpak. If you're on the desktop version like I am, then you'll need to open up a terminal. So for you, what you could do is click on Activities. We'll open up our Applications. And then we'll click here for Terminal. And that'll open up a terminal that we can use to install what we need for this section. And to do this, we'll need to install two packages. I'm logged in as a normal user on my end that does have sudo support. And since sudo support is enabled, I could run sudo and then apt install. And then I could type in the package names of the packages that I want to install right here. Now, if you decided to enable the root account when you install Debian, then what you could do is switch to the root account. Again, that's going to be su hyphen and then root. Just like that, that'll switch you over to root. You'll have to type in the root password, but I'm going to use the sudo method because, well, I have sudo access. Everything after the sudo command will not change regardless of whether you're using your normal user or the root account. Anyway, I'll run apt install. The first package is going to be, surprisingly, Flatpak. Next, we'll type the name of the second package. Now, I do want to mention, though, that this is only for those of you that are running the GNOME desktop. If you are not running the GNOME desktop, then you don't need to install this. Anyway, the name of the package is going to be gnome-software, hyphen plugin, and then hyphen flatpak. So those are the two packages right there that we'll be installing, or just the one package if you're not running gnome. Anyway, I'll press enter. I'll type in my super secret password. And that's all there was to it. We now have Flatpak support within our Debian installation. However, there's one more thing that we should do to make this even better. What we're going to do is add the FlatHub repository for Flatpak. It's going to be the largest repository of Flatpak software that you can find online. So we definitely want to add this. And just like before, we're going to want to use sudo or be logged in as root for this particular command. Now this command will probably work even without root access or sudo access but that's going to enable user mode for flat packs, and that's not something that we want to do. That's something that I'll explain in a future flat pack video on this channel. But for right now, we'll just make sure to use sudo with this command, or if we're logged into root, then we won't need sudo. But here's the actual command that we'll be running. We're going to run flat pack, remote hyphen add, and then we'll type dash dash if dash, and then not dash exists, just like that. The repository that we'll be adding is again FlatHub. So we'll type FlatHub right here. And then we'll type the repository URL after that, which is going to be https colon slash slash flathub.org and then slash repo slash and then flathub dot flatpack repo. And just take a moment to make sure that you've typed everything exactly as I have it here. And this command will also be listed in the official blog post for this video, which will be linked below. Anyway, I'll press enter. And now we've not only installed Flatpak support on our Debian installation here, but we've also installed the FlatHub repository as well. So we should be done with the terminal. So what I'll do is just exit out of here. And then the next thing we'll do is, well, reap our rewards. We could go up here to Activities. And then we can open up GNOME Software. We're going to click this button, if it appears, to restart GNOME software. Now it's refreshing, so that's a good sign so far. And well, here we go. So, so far, it won't look like anything has changed. But we do have access to additional software. And what I'll do is give you an example. If I go up here to the search icon and click on it, I could type in the name of an application that I want to search for. I'm going to search for a text editor. I think that's a fairly simple example. And right here we have text editor, but it shows that it's already installed, but I have yet to install a single flat pack. So what's going on here? Well, let's click on it. I think this might be an even better example than I thought, because right here we could choose which version we want, the Debian version, or if we drop this down, we could choose the flat pack version via FlatHub. Now you're not going to see both sources listed every single time. Not every application is available on FlatHub, 
just like some of the applications that are found in the FlatHub repository won't be found in the normal Debian repository. But in a situation where an application is listed for both, you will have an opportunity to select which version you want. Now the version that's already installed is the Debian version or the deb package. Essentially, this means that the version that you'd get by running apt install is what we have right now. And we can open it because, well, it's installed. But what I'm going to do, and you don't have to follow along with me, this is just an example. We'll use Flatpak later on in the video. So even if you don't practice with me right now, you'll get your practice later. Anyway, what I'm going to do is delete this version. This will delete the apt version that's pre-installed here in Debian. And to do that, I'll type in my password. And now it's removed. So what I'll do now is install the Flatpak version by choosing that version right here. I'll go ahead and install it. And now we can see that the Flatpak version of the GNOME text editor is what's currently installed. Now let's scroll down here and we can see that the version is version 44. Now if I was to scroll up and then drop this down to the Debian version on the other hand and then scroll down, we can see the version is older. And this is a great example for why I recommend that you install Flatpak support. I mean, consider this. The version of this particular application offered by FlatHub is version 44, which is newer than the version that Debian includes by default. Now, there's no reason why you have to upgrade it. If the installed version works just fine for you, then you should probably leave it well enough alone. But what if you wanted to take advantage of a newer feature in a newer version? If that's the case, then you can make the decision, if you want to, to install the newer version. If you don't want to do that, well, just leave it well enough alone. Again, this is not going to force applications that are currently installed to be updated to the Flatpak version. This isn't going to make any changes to your software unless you decide to make that change yourself. And now you have Flatpaks available to you here in Debian. Now the next thing we're going to do is install Firefox. But wait a minute, if I click on activities, I have a Firefox icon right here. So why would I need to install Firefox if it's already installed? Well, I'll show you exactly why you might want to consider doing this. Let's click on the version that's pre-installed here in Debian, which is going to be the ESR version of Firefox. So I'll click on that. And here we have Firefox. Now at first, nothing is going to stand out when you see this. I mean, it's Firefox. You've probably already seen Firefox before. However, when we click right here and then go down to help and then click about, at release time, we have Firefox version 102.11. And the version that we have here is 11. Yes, 11 versions behind the version of Firefox that's offered for general download. The reason for this is the ESR version of Firefox, that version is going to be updated much more slowly than normal Firefox. So what I'm going to recommend that we do is uninstall Firefox and install the latest version. However, in Debian, the latest version is not offered. This is it, this is what we have. So what we'll do is close Firefox and then we'll open up GNOME software, just like we've done a few times in this video so far. And then what we'll do is search for Firefox. And here it is, so we'll click on it. And here we only have the FlatHub version because this is technically a different version of Firefox altogether. This is normal Firefox, it's not the ESR version. FlatHub is going to give us the latest version. Since this doesn't give me the option to uninstall the Debian version of Firefox, what I could do instead is open up a terminal and I could just type terminal right here to find that right here in the list. And then what we're going to do is run sudo apt remove, or again, just apt remove if you're running under root, and that's the last time I'll mention that. We're going to uninstall Firefox hyphen ESR. I'll type in my super secret password. I'll confirm the change. And Firefox should now be removed from the system. So if I go up here to activities, we no longer have a Firefox icon down here in the tray. If I click on applications, we will not see the Firefox icon at all because we uninstalled it. However, that's okay because we have an option to install Firefox right here and we're going to install the FlatHub version. 
So I'll click on install. We'll let that run. And as you can see, it's now installed. The install icon has turned into a trash can icon to signify that we can remove the application because it's installed. Now one thing I'll point out here that's really important to understand is that as you can see right here, this is being provided by Mozilla. And this means by installing this particular application right here, we are installing Firefox directly from Mozilla, which means we'll get the latest version as soon as Mozilla releases that. It even says right here, this is blessed by Mozilla. So Mozilla is providing this to us via FlatHub. Now something to point out is that right here it says that Firefox is unsafe and this is completely untrue. Now the reason why it's showing up as unsafe in the first place here is because GNOME's developers made a very boneheaded decision to mark everything unsafe that's not using the Wayland windowing manager. That's going to be what takes over from Xorg. It's technical. Not going to get into that. So in this case, we can completely ignore that warning. Anyway, if I close out of this and go back to activities, and right here we have Firefox. We uninstalled the Debian version, and now we have the Flatpak version. And to add an icon to the panel down below, I can right click on this and pin to dash. That adds Firefox down here. And I can move it around as well back to its original position. And now if I go here and then click on help and then about, we see here that we have the Flatpak version and we have version 113. So it's newer than the version that Debian provides. And we could ignore this right here. Let's just go to a website to make sure that everything is working. I'll go to mine, for example, and it's working just fine. So now we have a more updated Firefox here in Debian. All right, for the next tweak that I'm going to give you guys, I'm going to show you how to install Thunderbird. Now for this, I recommend that you also install Flatpak support, which we've already covered earlier in this video. As long as you have that set up and ready to go, what we'll do is click on activities and we'll click here for GNOME software. Before I continue though, I just want to point out that we already have an email client here in Debian. We have Evolution. Now, in my opinion, Evolution isn't all that great compared to something like Thunderbird. Again, that's just my opinion. Some people might disagree with me on that. Now, one thing to point out about the Evolution email client is that sometimes it can work better with Microsoft Exchange. So if you are working for a company that uses Exchange and you want to download your email, then you might need to use Evolution for that reason. However, for all other use cases though, I think Thunderbird is just a better fit. And since I already have Flatpak support here on this particular installation, what I'll do is search for Thunderbird. And before I even finish typing Thunderbird, we see it here on the list, but we see two different versions of Thunderbird here. So I'll just click on the first one. And the first one is going to be the Debian version, the apt version, but let's go ahead and download the Flatpak version. And via process of elimination, it's probably this one. I'll click on it. And sure enough, it's offered by Flathub and I'll just click install. And just like I mentioned earlier, the Flatpak version will make sure that we have the latest version of Thunderbird. So let's open it. And here it is. We have Thunderbird installed on our system. Now, the thing is, I'm not going to set up my email account on this computer because it's just a demo installation. But if you have an email address with an email provider, you can type in your information right here, click continue, and it should find your account. If you have any trouble at all, you can check the documentation because some email providers might have some specific things that you have to set, but for the most part, Thunderbird should find the server settings for your email account and set that up for you. I'll leave that part up to you. But anyway, we have Thunderbird installed right here on our system. So if you want a great email client, well, now you have one. All right, so in this section, what we're going to do is install Google Chrome. And this is for those of you that use Chrome as your daily browser, or maybe you just want Chrome installed along with your other browsers. But either way, we're going to get Chrome installed. The first thing we'll do though is open up Firefox, the web browser that comes with Debian. So you should all have this available. So we'll click right here to launch Firefox. And with this open, what we're going to do 
is navigate to chrome.google.com, just like that. And then we'll click right here where it says download Chrome. And it says get Chrome for Linux. So it already knows that we're running a Linux distribution. And in my case, it has automatically detected that it's a Debian or Ubuntu style distribution because this option right here is already selected. So what we'll do is click accept and install. And it's already done. So I'll click right here to open up my downloads directory. And as you can see, we have the Debian version right here of Google Chrome. And to get this installed, what I'll do is right click an empty portion of the window right here. I'll click open in terminal. So that brings up a terminal. And if I list the storage, you can see right here, we have Google Chrome stable. Now to install it, what we'll do is run sudo and then apt. We'll give it the option install. We want to install Google Chrome. And since the package is not in the Debian repositories at all, what we're going to do is reference the locally downloaded version right here. So I'll type dot forward slash and then I'll start typing Google Chrome. I don't need to finish that though. After I type a few characters, I can simply hit tab and that will auto complete the file name. So I'll press enter. And even though I downloaded Google Chrome from the official website, there's still going to be some additional dependencies that are required for it to work. The apt install command understands this and is going to go ahead and take care of that for us, which is why I decided to run the apt install command, even though I downloaded a package from the official website. I'll press enter to accept the default of yes. And we can ignore this error right here. What I'll do is click on activities, then applications, and take a look at this. We have Google Chrome. If we want this to be visible in the panel down below, we can right click on it. We can pin it to the dash, even move it right next to Firefox if that's what we want to do. Anyway, I'll click on it. I don't need this terminal window anymore. I'm not going to make it the default browser in my case. That's up to you if that's what you want. And I'm going to make sure to not send Google any information. I think they probably have more than enough information at this point. Anyway, I'll click OK. And now we have Google Chrome. And to make sure that it's working, what I'll do is just visit the main website for this channel. And there we go. As you can see, Google Chrome is working. And now that we've tested it, I'm going to close out and I'll delete the Google Chrome download here. We no longer need that. So I'll right click it, move it to the trash. And well, we have Google Chrome installed here in Debian. Sorry to interrupt myself. But I just wanted to let you know that I really enjoy making this content for you guys. I have a ton of fun. If you enjoy the content that I produce, then please consider supporting Learn Linux TV. The thing is, producing content like this isn't cheap. So by giving back to the channel, you can help me make even more content for you guys. And to find out more about how you can support Learn Linux TV, what you could do is go to support.learnlinux.tv and there you'll find some of the ways that you can help support the channel. Anyway, let's get back to the video. All right, so next what we're going to do is fix an actual problem within Debian. And the problem here is that the version of LibreOffice that's shipped with Debian, and here's the icon for it right here, this version is completely out of date. If I click help and then about LibreOffice, we can see that the version is 7.4.5.1. Now the thing is, a new major version of LibreOffice is available, and the developers recommend that you stop using the 7.4 series of LibreOffice and move on to a newer version. But you might be thinking, why is that a problem? What's so bad about 7.4? Well, here's the thing. Microsoft Office is constantly being updated and LibreOffice also updates to match compatibility for Microsoft Office. If you're using an older version of LibreOffice, you're just going to, well, have problems. As Microsoft Office grows and ages and new versions are released, the version that's installed here in Debian will never change. So the version here in Debian will never benefit from all the improvements the developers of LibreOffice are adding to the project. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to close out of LibreOffice. Then we're going to bring up GNOME software. I should probably leave it open at this point since we keep going back into it so many times. Anyway, we're going to click on installed and then we'll find LibreOffice in the list right here. We'll keep scrolling. 
keep scrolling, and we're going to uninstall each component of LibreOffice one by one. So I'll click on the first one here. Let's uninstall that. And then I'll scroll down yet again. And now it's gone. So if I go up here to Activities, and then I click on Show Applications, we should not see LibreOffice anywhere here in the list. And actually, well, I still see it. Even though we uninstalled it, it's still right here. So what we'll do is open up a terminal, and that should be right here. And what I'll do here inside the terminal is run sudo apt remove, and then I'll paste in a list of packages. These are a list of packages that might be left over. You might have a few of these or maybe even none of these. We just want to make sure that LibreOffice, the installed Debian version, is completely removed. And here's the list of packages. If you want to copy and paste, you could grab it from the blog post for this video. That's going to be linked below. But here I have the list of packages. I'll just press enter and we'll get these removed. I'll go ahead and press enter. And now we should have LibreOffice fully removed from the system. If I go back to Activities and then Applications, we'll make sure that we see no LibreOffice icons at all whatsoever. And well, I don't. Good sign so far. So now let's open up GNOME software yet again. We'll go ahead and search for, you guessed it, LibreOffice. And here in the search results, we'll have a number of selections for various LibreOffice applications. However, if I click on one of these, you'll see that these refer to the Debian version, which is the one that we don't want. And the same is true here. But if we scroll down, we'll see LibreOffice mentioned by itself. We'll click on that. We'll make sure that it's the FlatHub version. I'll click Install. And that'll make sure that we do have LibreOffice installed here on Debian, but a more appropriate version. And that's done. So I'll click Open. And there's LibreOffice. We should also have an icon here in the Applications menu for LibreOffice. And we can see that we do. We have several different icons here for the various LibreOffice applications. So far, so good. And then from here, we can start a new writer document, a spreadsheet, and so on. And we are currently running, get this, version 7.5 instead of 7.4. So we have fixed the problem on Debian side. They should always be giving you the most updated version of LibreOffice. It should absolutely be an exception in their packaging rule. But that doesn't matter because, well, we fixed the problem ourselves and we have the latest version of LibreOffice right here in Debian. Now it's time for a very fun trick. This is going to be really, really awesome if you don't already know about this. We're going to install additional desktop environments. Now I'm sure you might have already known that you can do that, but there's a special command that makes this very easy. So what I'll do is click on Activities, and we'll open up a terminal. And what we'll do is run this command right here. We're going to launch an application called Task Cell. When I press Enter, and then I type in my super secret password. We get this handy menu right here, which enables us to choose additional desktop environments. So I could choose as many of these as I want, but I'll select KDE Plasma for right now. I could do so by pressing space on the keyboard. And again, you could install more than one. You don't have to install only that one, but I'm going to stick to that one for right now. Then I'll press tab. That brings me down to the OK button. And then I'll press Enter. And that's it. We're installing the KDE Plasma Desktop. The task cell command that I just gave you gives you an option, as you've just seen, to select a desktop environment. And now, in my case, KDE Plasma is installing. Now what we could do is log out of our session. And what I'll do is just restart. You shouldn't have to restart, though. Logging out should be more than fine. But I have seen some situations where other desktop environments might not show up unless you do a full restart. Of course, there's ways to solve that that go outside of the scope of this video. So to keep it simple, what I'll do is restart my system right now.
And back here on the login screen, what I'll do is just click on my username. And then down here, I'll click on the gear icon. And I apologize for the weird screen resolution. It's just something to do with my screen recorder. Something about login screens are hard to capture apparently. Anyway, I'll click on this gear icon and any additional desktops that you might have installed will be shown here on this list. And check this out. We have Plasma. So I'll choose the X11 version of Plasma. And then I'll continue and type in my password. And here we have the Plasma desktop. Feel free to check it out or whichever desktop environment you just so happen to install. Install as many as you'd like. That's one of the great things about Debian is that you can play around with various software. And you should definitely check out the software in Debian because it has one of, if not the largest repositories of Linux software out there. So moving right along. And for this particular tweak, what we're going to do is install the NVIDIA driver. And this is for those of you that have an NVIDIA GPU. So if that's not you, you can safely skip this particular tweak. Now, if you have no intention of playing computer games at all, and you also have no intention of working with 3D modeling, you don't really need to do this. If everything is working just fine as is, then you can leave your video driver well enough alone. However, if you do plan on playing games, or anything that features 3D rendering, for example, and you also have an NVIDIA GPU, then you should definitely consider installing the NVIDIA driver to get the full power out of your NVIDIA GPU. And that's what we're going to do in this section. Now, when it comes to most proprietary hardware and NVIDIA GPUs are considered proprietary here in Linux, the fact is Debian is going to set up most of that for you, but you might still need to install the NVIDIA driver. Here on my system, it's not installed at all. Now, before we can install the NVIDIA driver, we have to enable the non-free repositories. To do that, we'll open up, well, GNOME software for the 50th time at this point. We'll go up here to the hamburger menu and click on software repositories. A new window will appear, this one right here. And what we want to do is check the non-free boxes right here. This one as well. And we'll close. It's going to give us an option to reload the package repository index, which we probably should do. So I'll click reload. Otherwise, if we don't do that, the apt package manager won't know that anything's different. Anyway, I'll close out of here and we'll open up a terminal. And what we'll do is install the NVIDIA driver package. So in my case, I'll run sudo and then apt install. And the package that we want to install is NVIDIA hyphen driver, just like that. And there's going to be a number of dependencies here that are required, that's okay. I'll press enter to accept the default of Y for yes. And now the NVIDIA driver is installing. And here it's giving us a quick warning. It's letting us know that the Nuvo driver is what's currently being used. That's the open source version of the NVIDIA driver. This message is simply telling us to reboot the system to make sure that the NVIDIA driver is selected. And that's okay, we could reboot after this. That's no problem at all. I'll press enter. And we're all done. So what I'll do is just reboot the system like I mentioned. Give it a full restart. And we should have the NVIDIA driver as soon as it reboots. And now that I'm logged in, we should be using the NVIDIA driver. And one way to know is to click on activities. And then go down here to applications. We should see an NVIDIA application here in our list. And here it is, NVIDIA X settings. So if I click on that, then I go down here to GPU we can see that it has indeed detected the GPU here on this system. On my end, I'm using the GeForce GTX 1050 Ti, which is very old at this point. But since this is just a footage PC, I guess it doesn't really matter. Anyway, I have the NVIDIA driver installed, as you can see. So now I should be in good shape to play computer games. And as a matter of fact, in the next section, we're going to install Steam. Are you into PC gaming? Well, if you are, then you might want to install Steam within Debian. And that's very easy to do. What we could do is click on Activities and open up GNOME Software. And at this point, I highly recommend that you followed an earlier suggestion to install Flatpak support. 
And the reason for that is the Flatpak version of Steam is probably going to be the best fit. What we'll do here in GNOME Software is search for Steam, and we should see it right here in the search results. If we click on it, we should see that the source is FlatHub, and that's again what we set up earlier. But what I'm going to do is simply click on Install. It's that easy. And now that that's taken care of, I'll click Open. And if you get this message right here, it's just letting you know that you can install the Steam Devices package via app. If that's something that you want to install, you might need that for gamepad support, for example. Not sure how many of you will need that, but anyway, we'll click OK. And I'll go ahead and close out of this. And we can see that the text size is very small here. That's quite common with Steam. This is a 4K display, and this must not be the 4K version of Steam. It shouldn't matter, though. That should correct itself in an update, and it's updating right now. So we'll just let it finish, and I'll be right back. And take a look at that. Steam is open. It's working. Now I'm not going to sign into my account. I have no intention of playing games here on my footage PC of all things. But if I wanted to, I could. And we could also see that the smaller font size issue was automatically fixed when it finished updating. So Steam should be good to go. Feel free to log in and play some Linux games. All right, so next up, what we're going to do is make sure that we have proper multimedia support here in Debian. But in order to have access to a package that we'll be installing shortly, we will need the non-free version of the Debian repositories enabled. If you've already installed the NVIDIA driver, as I showed you earlier in the video, then you've already done that. But just in case you haven't, all you have to do is go up here to Activities, GNOME Software. We'll click the hamburger menu right here. We'll go to Software Repositories. And we'll make sure that the non-free repositories are all checked. So for reference, you can see which ones I have enabled right here. I've enabled all of them. So that's not a bad thing to do, actually. So feel free to enable each of these. But at least enable the non-free ones. But once you do enable the non-free ones, then all of these should be selected anyway. Once you do that, we should be good to go. I'll close GNOME Software for now because we're going to use the terminal for this part. And what we'll do is install two packages. What we'll do is run apt install. And the first package will be libavcodec-extra, just like that. And for safe measure, I'll also install VLC. It's a classic video player at this point, so we may as well have that installed. And that should, by itself, include every component within that particular application that it'll ever need. And for the libavcodec package, what that's going to do for us is provide all the multimedia codecs to any other application that may not have that built in. So I'll press Enter. I'll press Enter again to accept the default of Yes. Now at this point, now that we have all of these packages installed, you should have no problem when it comes to viewing multimedia files. And even if you do have a problem with multimedia files, then all you should have to do in that case is launch VLC. We did install it. So if a built-in player isn't working, you might, well, use VLC. It's a great application anyway, and it supports all the popular multimedia formats. Music, video, it should all work. And at this point, you should have proper multimedia support here in Debian. It was that easy. We installed the libav codec extra package, as well as the VLC package, and that's all there is to it. So moving along, the next thing that I'm going to show you guys how to do is set up the Backports repository in Debian. Now, since we're close to the initial release of Debian 12, there's probably not going to be a whole lot in that repository right now. So this is something that we're setting up in case we need it in the future. The Backports repository will include newer versions of applications that Debian has decided to make available in that repository. Updated kernels are an example of that. Anyway, to install the Backports repository, we'll open up a terminal. And then what we'll do is run nano. We want to edit a file. We're going to create a brand new file. The file is going to be located underneath slash etsy slash apt slash sources.list.d, just like that. And we'll name the file backports.list. So I'll press enter. I'll type in my super secret password. 
And what we'll do is add the repository line right here. I've copied it into my clipboard. I'm just going to paste it in. And there it is. So feel free to grab that line from the official blog post for this video linked down below if you want to copy and paste that line. But what we're doing is we're adding the bookworm version of Backports. So I'll save the file. And then after that, what we'll do is run sudo apt update. We want to refresh our package repository index because we did install an additional repository, so I'll press enter. And that's all there is to it. The Backports repository is now installed. Now the thing is though, there's not going to be anything of interest in Backports just yet. Again, we're installing this just in case we need it in the future. But if you do need it in the future, how do you install a package specifically from that repository? Well, I'll show you an example command that'll illustrate the process. Now you don't have to follow along with me though. This is just an example. I'm not going to install anything. I'm just going to give you the command syntax that you'll use if there is something within Backports that you might want later. The first thing we'll do is start off the command the same as we always do, apt install, if we want to install a package. But what we're going to do different is add dash t, then we'll type bookworm hyphen backports, followed by the name of the package. And the reason why we have to do this is because when you install the backports repository, none of the packages within that repository, if there are any packages in that repository, will be installed by default. Regardless of which package you install, it's always going to be installed from Debian's default repositories before anything else. In fact, Packages from Bookworm Backports will never be installed unless you specifically ask the apt command to install from that repository. And that's exactly what the dash T option does. We give it a name for the repository, in this case, Bookworm Backports, followed by the package name. Now again, this is very early in the release cycle for Debian 12, so there's nothing of interest here just yet, but there should be soon. This is something that I might explore again later, but for right now, I just showed you how to add the Backports repository within Debian, so now we have that in case we need it. All right, so here's another tip for you guys. We're going to install the Synaptic Package Manager. I have a terminal open already, and I'll show you the process of installing that package in a moment, but what I wanna do is just illustrate the problem. I guess it's not so much of a problem. I mean, GNOME software is fine, but it's not going to always show you every application. It's going to highly fixate on graphical applications, but sometimes you'll be working with the command line and you want to install packages that are used on the command line. It's not that you'll never find those applications here in GNOME software, it's just not the focus. And GNOME software itself, like I mentioned, is great. So I'm not knocking GNOME software at all, but if you're a more advanced user or you just want more control over your packages, then Synaptic is a awesome application to install. So what I'll do is run apt install synaptic, just like that. And in my case, it's already installed. It may or may not be installed already on your end, but once it is installed, you should find it in the list of applications here. So I'll go to applications. And here we have synaptic. So I'll click on it. It's going to ask for my password, so that's fine. I'll type that in. And this is just giving us a quick introduction. Now, this application is not going to look as modern as GNOME software does, but an application like this doesn't really need to look modern because it's not about that. It's not about style. It's not trying to win a beauty pageant or anything like that. But what this application is trying to do is be an efficient way of installing applications, and it is exactly that. Just like any other package manager, you can search for a package right here. You type in a search term and search for a package. We can go to different uh, categories here. So we see there's a number of categories and you can just scroll through this list here to find an application to install. I'll just choose one at complete random. So under games and amusement, I'll click on that. And what I'll do is just scroll all the way down. And what I'll do is install Frozen Bubble. That's a fun game that I like to play every now and then. So I'll click on the box right next to it. I'll mark it for installation. It'll then let me know which dependencies are required here for this application. So I'll mark those as well. And then we'll apply the changes.
And what I like to do is check the box right here to ensure that the dialog box closes on its own. Not a big deal, but just something I prefer. But anyway, we've installed Frozen Bubble via Synaptic. So if I check out the installed applications here yet again and scroll through the list, we'll find Frozen Bubble in the list. So I'll click on it, and there it is. And unfortunately, there's something going on with my screen recorder when I access the game in full screen mode. It's not currently working. My screen recorder can be finicky at times, so that's nothing to worry about. But Frozen Bubble is a great and fun game to check out if you want to waste some time. It's just a lot of fun to play, and I highly recommend it. But this isn't so much about Frozen Bubble. Even though that is an awesome game, we are focused here on the Synaptic Package Manager, which we now have installed. And there's a number of people in my audience that prefer this package manager over GNOME software. And now that you have both installed, you can make that decision for yourself. But having Synaptic installed is a great thing to have. Even if GNOME software is your primary way of installing applications, Synaptic is also really good. Now, Synaptic is only going to show apt packages. It will not show flat packs, for example. Just keep that in mind. You will need to use GNOME software for flat packs. But again, Synaptic is awesome. It's a great thing to have, and now we have it installed. And there you go. I've just showed you 12 things to do as soon as you install Debian 12 on your laptop or desktop, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, then please click that like button to let YouTube know how much you love this video, and that'll help YouTube understand that we need more Linux on YouTube. Anyway, I have some additional content coming very soon that I can't wait for you to see. I have all kinds of cool things coming, as a matter of fact. So subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux, and I will see you in the next video.